Okay, this is a probably going to be a longer video because I'm going to demonstrate um, Tesla's rotating magnetic field with a circuit and a core and just everything I have about it and uh, how I built it. And basically, it's probably the only video I'm going to do on it because it's sort of an older project, but I thought it'd be good to document. So, <clears throat> what I have, I've drawn out this really basic schematic, which is I have an audio source or a sine wave source, which is this function, just standard function generator. I have a phase shifter, and that is this device, which is a um, it puts out two. It's adjustable from 10 to 10 kilohertz, 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, and it is able to uh, take the one incoming sign and split it into. Uh, two outputs that are shifted 90 degrees with respect to each other. And that's the circuit that, that's inside that box. It's actually two circuits. This is just showing channel one. <clears throat> um, channel two uses different value resistors um, to achieve that effect. Um, and then, so you have the two sine waves coming out that are 90 degrees shifted, and then you have the, in this case, audio amplifier. Um, has two, two channels, four ohm outputs, and there's the audio, audio amplifier. And you'll notice on the circuit that I've put four ohm resistors, and that is because at low frequencies, um, these are base. These this coil that I have that I'll show in a second is really basically a short circuit. <laughs> um, it doesn't have the the same properties as a speaker. So, and finally the actual core. And there's a top view of it with a little magnet in the middle and a, and a uh, circular spacer. And here is the core diagram with inputs from the generator and then here are the grounds that basically connect together. Um, core I use there, the number of turns, and that's an Amidon core that I used. Uh, so now it's time for the second part, which is to demonstrate with magnet and scope. So we'll start with the magnet and I'll turn it on. It's going to be hard to see, I'm sure. Turn away that light source a little. Also, a little WD-40 doesn't hurt. So I think it's spinning right now. The way that I kind of tell is I'll take a sharpie, mark, a sharpie, and just tap it on the edge of, one, of the magnet and see if it makes a circle. So it did make a circle. It is spinning. And right now it's spinning at 54 hertz. Um, I'm going to speed it up just a tad for the purpose of seeing the sine wave. So, sine wave output, these are taken across each coil, and you can tell it's pretty good. Well, it's still a little faster. <clears throat> so, they're 90 degrees shifted. This is at 100 hertz, and uh, pretty, pretty dead on, right on money. Um, and kind of changed my circle. I really wish that came through better, but I'm going to poke it again. Well, I'm not going to poke it again. All right, that's all there is to that. That's the magnet demonstration with the scope. So we kind of killed two birds with one stone there. That's about all there is to it. I've got my scope set. It's at um, 5 volts, peak to peak, and with that, when the frequency increases, the, uh, the voltage across the coils increases as well. And what I would typically do, sorry for that fast transition, what I would typically do is I'd have the magnet lower, but I've got it higher right now, propped up with a dowel rod inside of this um, nylon spacer enclosure thing. Um, and that, <clears throat> just so we can see the magnet. But it's a little 
um, better if it's dead in the middle of the, uh, of the toroid. So there is the setup. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to extract the magnet. You can kind of see the the circle. Let's see. I don't know. The camera just does not like that. But I'm going to turn it back on and turn up our frequency. So as the frequency goes up, the voltage across it, the uh, the coils goes up. I'll just kind of bring the scope out a little. So that's 1.2K. 2.5 3. And we're going up to uh, like 10. 10 is the max that you want to go to. Uh, there's a really cool so. so there's a very cool uh, thing that I've done before and I think there's a video that I've put up about it but basically I took that television and put this core around the back of it where the yoke would normally be and it creates a circle on the uh, on the on the CRT. So, all right. I think I've shown all I wanted to show. Put this back in the closet, and uh, well, let me show a few more things <clears throat> while I got it out. Turn everything off here. Um, this is the circuit top view, just kind of perforated with some SB400 uh, boards that sort of look exactly like a uh, like a normal breadboard on the bottom. Um, and then if we scoot over here, I've got a fan mounted. That's just for cooling on these resistors. They are pretty hefty. They're basically they're dummy loads that I got. Um, and they are non-inductive and they don't do anything except limit the current. But it's kind of cool to have the fan there. Just flip it on. So it's good to have. This is this does get hot. This this is a like hundred watt receiver, and it certainly gets hot. Um, and it it limits the current. So it would be it'd be a lot better to have a higher current. Um, source of power, but this was all I had at the time. And okay, so in the future what you could do with this circuit is you could uh you could use different components in the phase shifting circuit and get a lot higher frequency. You would use better op amps. And then you could find some power op amps really that um could replace this. So this, there's really not a limit on the frequencies that you could have spinning around in this toroid, which is kind of cool. Now, the other thing is that if you had higher currents, and maybe if you used like an iron, an iron toroid instead of the ferrite toroid, which have a higher like uh, saturation flux, so you can get more magnetic field, um, you could actually put this on the outside <clears throat> and put like a steel bearing in here, and it should spin around too which is also shown in the Tesla patent, which is just that um, the field that you create in here will interact with a um, magnetic um, piece of iron on the outside and make it rotate. So those are just some different ideas other than what I've shown here. Higher frequency and putting the magnetic element out here. So, okay. Uh, the last thing would be that I've used WD-40 to my advantage in the circuit just by sticking it in there. It does a, it does wonders because before it was making quite a racket, and it it does make it quieter and lets the uh, speed go higher. And uh, so 
So be careful if you do build the circuit because um, those are pretty high speeds. You can get it a lot higher than what I had it just now if you have higher current available and just uh, different different variables that you can play with. So it is very dangerous though because you could basically make a railgun. Okay, go ahead in this video. Thank you for your time.